Welcome to Non-Gendered Fitness, where we explore health, fitness, transitioning, and queer life from beyond the binary. Proudly brought to you by Fearless Movement Collective, the home of queer fitness and health. And here's your host, Bowie Stobar. Hi there, welcome to Non-Gendered Fitness. This is episode number 21. My name is Bowie Stover. My pronouns are they, them, and I am plop and stoked to have you join me today. The show is recorded on the stolen lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. Sovereignty never was and never will be ceded. I pay my respects to elders past, present, and emerging. This week, friends, we have a very special guest on the show my very good friend, Cherie. Cherie is an Indigenous speaker, a midwife, a published author, student hot air balloon pilot, and mother of six. While she was expected to mature into a box of damaged goods growing up in rural Victoria, experiencing horrific domestic violence, her energy was directed into creating her own brand new narrative. With a deep-seated connection to her 60,000 years of Indigenous ancestry, Cherie seeks the beauty, connection, and kindness in everything she faces. This year started with Cherie being diagnosed with a chronic health disease, which was the catalyst for change that Cherie used to recreate new health and wellness. Redesigning her diet, leaving addictions in the past, and moving forward with exercise, Cherie has connected physical exercise, and in particular running, as a way to heal, be strong, and connect to her culture and her ancestors. Welcome to the show, Cherie. Thank you. So cool to have you here. So to begin, I would like to ask you, what is your experience with getting active? Well, it's been a bit of a journey and I think it really started um, in the last probably six months. So I have in the past enjoyed things like um, HIIT and strength training and things but from the start of this year I was diagnosed with a chronic kidney disease and uh, with that because of the stage it's at it can be controlled through diet and exercise so I kind of used that as a catalyst to get off my bum and start moving. Yeah, yeah. wow what a what a, a prompt to kind of get you going yeah. hey because yeah. I have I know that for the past like while I've seen you going to the group training sessions, the boot camps and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. How do you find those? I love it. Like I love the reason why I love um, like high intensity interval training and strength training is because it takes me out of my head and it brings me back into my body, which, you know, was great for mental health, mm. and, uh, stressed or have anxiety or anything like that. And yeah, I mean, let alone all of the health benefits. But why I started that was I needed something to help, you know, with mental health, getting back into my body, being grounded. And, yeah, so I found those things, like, so incredible. Yeah, fitness and getting active just has that sort of kind of real benefit, hey? Yeah, yeah. How have you found uh, the relationship with your body has changed since you've become more active? It's... It's changed in so many ways. I'll try and like pinpoint a few. I think one of the main things is what I said earlier about it just, it grounds me. Mm. So it doesn't matter what's kind of going on in my day, if I'm stressed about things, if even if my body is feeling unwell, that if I get out, uh, be active, it calms, like it calms down my nervous system, it brings me back into my body and then I kind of feel like, yep, yeah, I've reset and helps me, you know, if I do it at the start of the day, then it sets me up for the rest of the day to be more positive. Yeah, yeah. so good. And how now now that you've kind of stepped back from the high intensity interval training, you were sharing with me you've started running. Could you could you share a little bit about that experience with our listeners? Yeah. So I actually have only started my running journey since March and it kind of happened accidentally. So I just finished my job, was waiting for my new job to start and then the world kind of stopped because <laughs> we had a pandemic. And so next minute I wasn't working. I had my three little kids home for like 10 weeks straight and I thought we're just in the house 
probably gonna, you know, go a little bit stir crazy and I need to do something with my body or I'm gonna lose the plot as well. So <laughs> I looked up online and thought oh, maybe I'll hire a treadmill just for a month, see how it goes. The kids kind of laughed and said, you know, you're just going to end up using it to hang the washing. <laughs> um, on the first day that we got it, my seven-year-old was really excited and like put all of his racing cars at the end of it and like turned it on like full speed um, <laughs> and let the racing cars all like fall off the side. And I was, and then you know there was the joke of yeah, that's what we're going to use it for a month. And I'm like no. Nah. So I started using the treadmill and one of the reasons other than I had the kids at home all the time was I did feel self-conscious about going out into the world and being this fake runner. So I used the treadmill and, you know, did it really slowly. And then in that month, it kind of gave me confidence to leave the house and get out into the world and start running. So that's where it, that's where it kind of started from. And you've run 10Ks now, was it? Like you've done yeah. a 10K. Was it a fun run? It was? It was. It was for um, Run Rona. So the money that we paid for registration went to help in the Aboriginal health sector. And I decided to do the 10Ks. I'd never run 10Ks before, but... The reason I decided was because one day when I went for a run, I like accidentally ran 5Ks <laughs> and it wasn't until, you know, my Fitbit buzzed and told me my distance and I thought, no, nah, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> and then so I stopped and started walking back home and thought, oh my God, this is actually quite a long way. I think I actually did accidentally run 5Ks. <laughs> and so it was from that point that I thought, well, if I can accidentally run 5Ks, maybe I can run seven next time and... Maybe I can run eight next time. And then, so when this fun run came up, I thought, well, maybe I can run 10. So yeah, that, so that was what I did. 10K is such a long distance. <laughs> such a long distance. I don't know why they call it a fun run sometimes. It's like really... Like... No, it really hurts. It's painful. <laughs> <laughs> you're always happy you've done it afterwards. I've done a 10K fun run and the whole time I was just like... Don't stop. Just don't stop. Just keep stepping. Just keep stepping. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all yeah. I was thinking about. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. much like that. <laughs> oh, intense. Oh, running's an interesting activity. Yeah. Yeah. Such a difference from that high intensity stuff for the tra strength training as well. Yeah, it is. And it's like, it's interesting how I actually don't know why I decided to run. Like, other than, you know, getting the treadmill so that I could stay active while I was in the house with the kids. But I never, ever thought it would become one of those things where, you know, I've got it in my weekly schedule now that certain days is when are my run days. Like that was that was never in the plan. So it's kind of funny and exciting at the same time to be like this accidental runner. Yeah, full credit. Running is, is something that's definitely not one of my strong points. <laughs> <laughs> when I was sharing, sharing with you earlier, Zay and I go for runs and Zay's running along chatting and I'm kind of running along. They, they actually stopped one time and was like, I can walk as fast as you're running right now. I just started fast walking. I'm just like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. I'm running because I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. I think I'm also, like, I'm a really slow runner. And yeah. I'm like, but you're running, so you're doing it. And I'm right. Like, and it's, you know, it's not about times or personal best, although I get very excited when I beat my personal best. Yes. But it's, yeah, it's, you know. Getting out there and doing it. It's just and, doing it, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I find that that's what I'm like. It's like, I don't need to go fast. I'm just going to cruise. Yeah. I'm like, it's okay. And I can I can go all right. I can, I mean, it's like, you know, it takes me about three Ks to warm up. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah. this is like yeah. that whole, that whole first three Ks, I'm just like, this is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I do opposite thing to you in that, like, you know, the first couple Ks, I'm like, yeah, I'm running. This is so great. And then, you know, after a couple of Ks, my head's like, why are you doing this? This is silly. You could like die. You could explode. Everything hurts. You're going to die. And then, you know, my legs don't listen to that because they're running. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's that thing of t telling my brain, no, it's okay. You, you want to do this. This is what <laughs> you left the house to yeah. do this. No one's telling you to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that little voice. It'll get you if you're not careful. It's like, you could just stop right now. 
I could. If you're lying to me, voice. <laughs> Stop it. Just shh. Yeah. <laughs> body knows. <laughs> Listen to body. <laughs> How have you found that getting running, have you found it like it's caused other changes in your life since you've kind of made that your focal point? Yeah, it has. Yeah, I mean, which is interesting again, coming from a place of I was just going to have a treadmill for a month and then and then that's it. And then, you know, became this accidental runner. And I think... The reason that I've kept going with it and didn't just stop after the month with the treadmill was there's obviously, like, it works for me. And I guess the main things is, yeah, it keeps me grounded. It really helps with my mental health no matter what's going on, that if I go out for a run, it clears everything and it grounds me. You know, I know what's good for my body. It's it's helping my kidney disease and the other main point of why I run is you know being an Aboriginal woman being connected to country is so important and such a fundamental point of who I am and how I find my sense of belonging in the world and being so busy with work and having lots of kids and stuff like that it's sometimes hard to just relax and kind of you know be at homeostasis anyway let alone try and keep connected to you know my center my values and my culture so when I'm running it's like one way that just you know surefire gets me there and when I'm running on country everything just feels right again and it just I think that it's almost like moving meditation it's like when I'm running it's my feet are on the earth and I'm connected back, it's like I'm plugged right back into like the mother. So, wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. It's so inspiring. No wonder you're kind of interested in, in sticking to it when it's got such a enriching and rewarding kind of outcome for you. Yeah, which yeah, was another one of those <laughs> just God, you know, didn't see this coming. Yeah. And that I think that feeling of connection when I'm running to country, it you know, it fills me up so much that, you know, sometimes I, sometimes I don't think of anything, but sometimes when I'm running it, like, and I feel that connected to the country, I can, I can smell the gum leaves and I can um, hear the flowing water of the creek and I can feel, you know, the sound of my feet on the earth and all of those things just, yeah, it takes me right back to, oh, this is who I am. This is my country. This is my culture. And feeling so connected in that way I think you know being an accidental runner I'll probably just keep running till I'm like 70 or something now (laughs) yeah so cool I love that I like um that you you shared with me how when you started running you you got the treadmill because you thought that it would be more comfortable for you to start inside and compared to outside because yeah. you weren't a runner. Yeah. So it's interesting now to to hear how you've gone from that to just having so much more. Like there's so much yeah. more to it, right? Like physical activities, it's often perceived as this kind of superficial, just do the movement and just do the training because then you'll look like this. Yeah. And that's kind of such a surface level thing. Yeah. And there's, there's always such a deeper connection with – the ways we find we can move our bodies that really resonate with us and kind Mm. of build the relationship that we have with ourselves or the environment around us. Yeah, so amazing. Yeah, I think so. And, like, going from that place of, you know, I felt self-conscious about running out in the world because I wasn't a runner. And it was literally just, you know, one sentence I said to myself, which was, well, you're running there for you're a runner yep. and it's it's so like it's so simple <laughs> so kind of like baseline but yeah when you compare yourself to other people then you kind of self-depreciate yourself and don't acknowledge the things that you actually are already doing so when I said to myself, well, you ran yesterday, so you're probably a runner. Yeah. That, I was like, oh, yeah, cool. I'm a yeah, runner. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's so so many kind of 
preconceived ideas come with these activities as well and it's and it's kind of society sells us this perception right of like what a runner is and it's like that kind of skinny lean looking white person who jogs down the street all the time in their active wear hey and that's right like you know one of the main things in my head which i'm kind of like actually most of the time don't care what people think but then at the same time you do unconsciously so Mm. one of my things about not going out for a run was well like too fat to be a runner i don't know if i've got the right shoes I am so slow, like, there's probably going to be people walking that are, like, faster than me running and all of these things that I haven't been to run club, you know, I haven't done this many amount of Ks Mm. to call myself a runner or all these ideas that I had in my head that I'm like, well, that's all of those things are, like, not true and um, you just take what you feel and go with that yes yeah. and it's like turned out to be such a rewarding thing for you yeah yeah, yeah. fitness industry has so much to answer for when it comes to kind of selling that image of what it means to be active yeah because i think it becomes such a barrier for yeah. people you know i don't fit i don't fit into this particular look or yeah. this particular thing. I don't have, you know, expensive training gear. It's like you can run in your pajamas. It really doesn't yeah. matter what exactly. you're wearing, you know. Yeah. I train shoeless. Yeah. And sh- shoes to me are overrated. I don't yeah. – I've spent the last, like, seven years training without shoes. The fitness industry will tell you otherwise. You've got to spend 300 and something bucks on a pair of Nikes, you know. Yeah, oh, exactly. it's, it's so bad. The messaging is it, – I think it really – it limits people. Yeah. But, um, it's yeah. so great that you were able to – kind of reflect on that and ask that question yourself it's like well i'm i'm running so am i a runner it's like yes <laughs> you, you are literally yeah. doing the thing you you are saying is like that yeah. is all it takes exactly. you are once you do it that's what you are there's definitely not a kind of set criteria yeah it reminds me of like when i was growing up i was not sporty like I still remember one of our sports days and this, one of the sports activities was the egg and spoon race. Oh, that sounds Um, bad. And that was cool. (laughs) That was cool. And I like focused on the egg on the spoon, like so hardcore and I was so slow, but I was not going to drop that egg, like no matter what. And so I did it and I was really slow and really proud of myself. And that's like the one kind of sporting activity I did. All the other things we did, like hurdles, high jump, um, the sprinting relays and stuff I was just like not 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 doing it not even going to join in and so I didn't you know I haven't come from any kind of like sporting background and I would rather just sit under a tree and read a book and eat cake um you know my (laughs) brother was really he was like we used to call him Speedy Gonzalez because he was like running all the time and yeah I was always under a tree eating cake yeah and and for that For there to be something in me that, you know, all of these years later that I've made a decision to do this thing for my health just reminds me that, yeah, you don't have to come from a particular background. You don't have to look a certain way. You didn't have to win all the sports at school when you were young or be the captain of whatever sports team, you know. You can be 37 and fat and you can run 10Ks, like, Mm. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's so easy to define ourselves by our past experiences yeah. or who we have been or that yeah. idea in our head. It's just like, well, I'm not this because yeah. X, Y, Z. Yeah. But it's like, but could I be? Yeah. Well, that's what exactly. no, you were saying that to me earlier on. What was the, the question? But what if I can? Instead of thinking, what if yeah. you can't about something? Think, what if I can? Yeah. Like growing up, there were always, you know, like I'm kind of this statistic where you know, come from a working family. We're an Aboriginal family. Not many of us, like, finished school. In, you know, in the eyes of society, we were down the bottom of the ladder. And so growing up, I would hear things like, you don't don't bother finish school because you're not going to make it. Don't bother trying out for that because you're not going to make it. And I would always switch that thinking to, but what if I can? And if you're telling me that I can't run, that I can't finish school, that I can't become this, then you're putting those limits on me that I didn't want or believe in in the first place. So, yeah, we'll just turn that around and, and say, 
you're telling me that I can't do this, but what if I can? And then having that as kind of the core value of everything that I do has shown that I can actually do some pretty cool things. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, I had a hot air balloon pilot. Like, <laughs> I know. So badass. Yeah. Like boss lady of, of <laughs> Victoria for what's what your job title? Oh, <laughs> you I still don't have to know. Learn, I still have to learn my job title, but it's something like senior project officer of the Koori maternity strategy. I was like, so. Oh. Something epic like that. That is amazing. So, <laughs> yeah. many, so many words in there. So many words in there. Yeah, I think I might just still stick with boss lady. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yeah, we... When we hear these narratives from other people telling us what we can and can't do, if we start to believe them, like, we don't get those opportunities, hey? But... Yeah, and I, like, if I took on all the things that people have said to me in the past about what who I am and what I'm not going to become, then that would have been a pretty shit life if I listened to them. Mm. And to instead use what they've said as you know, fuel to turn it around and it's not that I even want to prove anything to anyone. Like I actually don't don't care um, about that. But what I care about is, you know, living my own best life and setting an example for my kids but not just my kids, for like Aboriginal community. If there's any mob out there that can look at me and go, she was like that barefoot blonde headed girl in the Mallee who used to like swear at everyone and she was like eight years old and now she's like you know a student hot air balloon pilot and a boss lady and she's like running these ridiculous lengths and you know things like that that I think that's also the heart of where all this comes from from is that I'm just a person just like you are just like anyone else is and I think if yeah if mob can see that well if Cherie can do it then I can because you can if you don't let other people limit you by the shit that they say about you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's such a hard thing to to kind of have to live with. Powerful stuff. And people are just shit sometimes, right? Yeah, people, <laughs> people, people are, are totally are shit. Definitely just shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, so how could other folks that may have lived a similar experience to you, how could they maybe get started with something like this, do you think? Like what do you think opportunities – are out there that they could perhaps kind of try out? Um, I think one thing for me is that I'm like stubborn as all heck and I know for some people that it's still tricky, like it's tricky and it's not easy and I think a big thing, you know, for mob and other people who want more for themselves and feel like they can't quite get it is to let them know that they can and that it doesn't mean that it's going to be easy and but it will be worth it sometimes it is lonely and sometimes you just have to be your own best friend and at the same time even in that loneliness you're actually not alone and you know there's there is people you can reach out to there's you know for mob there's We have, like, Victorian Aboriginal, like, health services where, you know, you can link in and they can help you with wellness plans and they can help you link into, like, sports and lots of things like that. So the the opportunity is there and there's definitely ways that you can be supported. That's so great that there are those options available. And that, that's just within Victoria that you know of? That I know of. And also, I mean, the other thing is... There's a lot of great services around Melbourne, like kind of going more regional and rural, but it is so much more limiting in terms of support. But I know that at least in each of the towns, there's still like an Aboriginal health service. So yeah. that you can still be accessed through that and can still help um, to create like things with health and wellness and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's good to know because like coming from a small town, I know they're so redneck. Like yeah. this is yeah. conservative white rednecks, hey. Yeah. Like it's it's so it's such limiting spaces the further it you is. go away from those metro areas. Yes, yeah. and it's still pretty segregated, even yeah. when people say it's not. But you I know, totally is, up, yeah. The you know, all us black fellows would be the last one to be chosen in the sports teams and after school activities, 
would often be, you know, the guys do football, girls do netball, the, the black fellas do, well, you know, we didn't really get much of an opportunity. And this is like talking back in like 80s, 90s, mm. and oh, I'm pretty sure it hasn't really changed, but just the idea of there was so much less opportunity for Indigenous people to access these kinds of things because, you know, we, there often wasn't funding back then for anything like that for kids to get into sports. And also, even if they did, would you even want to? Because you're probably just going to get bullied anyway. So. Yeah, that's right. So it's, it's that superficial, well, we're giving you the opportunity. Yeah. It's like it's one thing to give the opportunity, but to actually create that safe space, yeah, right? Exactly. It's a totally another yeah. thing. It's like, again, that surface level kind of yeah look we're helping yeah, you yeah exactly like, no, you're not, you're just giving us more like mental health trauma yeah, so, yeah 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 so shit yeah and what could allies out there do better to help create opportunities or give support to people that are sharing a similar experience to yours i think the main thing is to listen and because we do actually have a voice and we do often use our voice and it's just a lot of the time it's been fallen on deaf ears for a long, long, long time. And, I mean, at the moment with everything going on with Black Lives Matter, that it's so much more in the media and there's more attention and I do feel like allies are unpacking their own shit and calling other people out on theirs. And so I feel like this is kind of a really significant time where our voices do have the opportunity of actually being heard for once. And, yeah, I think the main thing is listen to what we say, create those safe spaces for us so that when we do share, that you do listen and acknowledge and, you know, keep inclusive with us as we share our stories and... You know, if we ask for help or looking for opportunities, help us to find that in your own kind of sector, like whatever it is you're doing, that, you know, keep that space open. If an Indigenous person comes in and, you know, says something, I love how you do your class, Bowie, but this bit, like, is a little bit shit or can you acknowledge that for, you know, how that may not work for my culture? Be like, yeah, cool, okay, let's work with that rather than, you know, kind of feeling shamed and then shutting down and then not not creating change or support. Yeah, yeah. like making it more about my shit than just being yeah. open to actually being yeah, like, yeah. yeah, I can learn from this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah let's talk together. And yeah. yeah. Ah, such, such good advice and to- totally needed. Like when you were sharing that, what it, the thoughts that came to me is like ha- seeing from my experiences as a white person that it's like they're – People don't believe that it just because, like when an Indigenous person shares something, it's like, oh, well, they don't know. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't know what they want. Look at them because of X, Y, Z. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, but that's your opinion and you're also a white person. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that really counts. That's, that's <laughs> it's like, thing. They told you and you said no. Yeah. You, you like, don't think that. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> what does is, what is your opinion matter right now? And it just it just highlights all the experiences I've had growing up from that, like a really conservative, small white town in Queensland, regional yeah. Queensland, like it doesn't get much more redneck than up there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just so true. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a lot of like, there was Aboriginal communities up where I'm from, where it was like, they were, it was almost like the Indigenous population was forced into those communities yeah. and they were really treated unfairly yeah. and like all these rules that white people didn't have to follow. Yeah. And it's like if they shared their experiences, it's like, no, that's not that's not true. It's like Yeah. Yeah. And it's you don't know that. Exactly. And yeah. it's like the unwillingness to be well, the unwillingness to listen and then also just the unwillingness to be challenged. It's like Yeah. You know, yeah. if we don't if we don't be open as a person or people to listen to others and be willing to be wrong or be willing to call it out, then, you know, nothing's going to change. Mob is still going to feel like they're less than who they are and which will then create the cycle of them, you know. If you feel unworthy, then you are not going to get anywhere because everything that's been told to you is based on 
on that and so then you believe it and you know that then change isn't going to happen at all so, yeah 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 and it, it's yeah systemic change needs to yeah. happen it's not it's not just and i think this goes within all the minority groups it's like it's not the responsibility yeah. of that minority to make the changes because yeah. they, they don't have the power yeah like whether it's in the queer community yeah, exactly. whether it's in indigenous populations yeah. like anything like that refugees Minorities don't have the power, right? We rely yeah, on the majority yeah, to shape yeah. change so that we can have more space yeah. and more opportunities. Yeah. And if the majority is unwilling, then you can't blame a minority for not having access to the things that they yeah. need to actually have, like, better opportunities yeah, in life. exactly. It's, like, spot on. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have anything else that you'd like to share with folks listening out there that you've found has helped you in your experience with life with getting active with learning how to just explore you and be yourself completely i think just keep your mind open and just be willing like you know like i said it's three months ago that i started running and i only started that because i wanted to be active while the pandemic was on and if you are able to like be willing have your mind open then you know so so much more will come your way and i think you'll really actually surprise yourself at how like amazing and capable your body and mind actually is thanks so much for coming in and having a chat with me today you're welcome that was heaps of fun yes (laughs) all righty If you have any questions about this episode or would like to learn more about how we may be able to help support you, you can go to our website, www.fearlessmovement.co and send us a message. You can jump in and try out our seven-day or 14-day free trial or join us for some at-home training. Also, feel welcome to pop in and leave a review on Apple Podcasts or anywhere that lets you review our podcast. Jump on the website, put a comment in below this episode. Let us know what you think. Let us know what you'd like to hear. We want your feedback, friends. And if you would like to follow us on the socials, you can find us on Facebook as Fearless Movement Collective. You can find us on Instagram by following non-gendered fitness as non underscore gendered underscore fitness. You can follow Fearless Movement Collective as at fearless underscore movement underscore co or me, Bowie, as the dot no dot t dot nb. Until next week, friends, remember, you can achieve anything you want if you put your mind to it, if you believe in yourself, if you believe in who you are, You have that strength inside you. You can do amazing and wonderful things. And regardless of what anyone says, you are worthy, you are of value, and you are capable of succeeding in your life and living the way that you want to live. Have a rad as day, pals. Mm -hmm.